welcome back to GTS Garage. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at polishing aluminium. Um, some people have chrome on their bikes and they're fairly lucky. You keep on top of chrome and it works well. You ACF 50 it during the winter, it works well. You don't have to worry too much and it's a light polish and it comes up gleaming year on, year out. Or year in, year out. So, that's one. And if you've got lots of chrome on there, I'm sure you're looking after it. The only problem with chrome is if you do not look after it, it will pit. And once it starts to pit and flake off, that's it. That piece is gone. You have to have it re-chromed, which is very, very expensive. The alternative, and what I've got on my project bike, is aluminium. I've got lots of aluminium all over the bike. So if I want to bring in, if I want to make certain things shine, certain, certain, where did certain come from? If I want to make certain things shiny, such as um, top yoke. Top yoke's a lovely one to make shiny. You can have, then have it engraved and everything else. You want to do something fancy with it. Um, you can shine up. You can shine up using home tools. You don't need expensive garage tools. So you don't need that 500 pound great big shine that you see um, my friend Pete with. You don't need that. There's a couple of other videos that are showing hardware which I, I just wouldn't want to buy to be honest. There are some tools out there that you can do this entire job in probably in about 20 minutes and you're done. That is one way of doing it and you are purchasing the right equipment and it will work you will end up with a fantastic job each and every time. But I'm not going to spend £500 polishing pieces of aluminium. I want to do it, I'm going to do it infrequently. So what I want to do now is I'm going to show you how to do it just with the home garage, tools that you've got, not more spending more than about 20, 30 quid on it. So, tools that you're going to need. Tools you're going to need are sandpaper, and that's your first one. You are going to need three sets to start you off. You are going to need 60, 80 and 120. Um, if you get two sheets of each of those, they will break it from, they will break the surface from a, um, a dull metallic aluminium looking thing to a shiny aluminium thing, thing, item. So it will be shiny, once you've hit it with a 60, 80 and a 120, it will be shiny. But if you look at the surface, you will notice you are seeing visible scratches there. So what we need to do now is remove those scratches and make it um, a flat piece of metal, uh, a flat piece of, or flat surface. What we'll use to do that is the 400. If you get a piece of 400 wet and dry, 800 wet and dry, 1000 wet and dry, 1200 wet and dry, 1500 wet and dry. The stop there. So that's what I would use next. So what you want to do is use wood water, go through those stages doing the entire tank once or twice. You probably do not need more than one sheet of each. Probably do not need more than one sheet of each. So don't go out buying 50 rolls of it because you don't need to. Um, now if you plan on doing anything to that tank, especially if you're going to draw on it similar to what I'm doing, if you are going to put some artwork on it, leave it at 1200 or 1500. If you go beyond that, it's like writing on a mirror. So if you draw on a mirror at home, you know it kind of comes thick at the edges and where the nib comes down it just splays out. You're wasting your time. So stop at 1200 and it's, it's manageable. That splaying out is manageable with 1200 and it will look like a, a a dull mirror rather than a really top sparkly mirror. So that's your first tool. That's your wet and dry requirements. Um, you could probably go out. These are from Wilkinson. I think they cost me like two pound each for a pack of ten. So, and they have 60, 120, and 180 in, and that one has an 80. So they're more than adequate. That's all you need to be spending is a couple of quid. Next thing you are going to need is. A home drill. If you most people have got one of these, so what you will you need are these are these attachments. So the attachments about £6 each on eBay. Um, what you'll need is a buffer one, which I shall show you in a second, once I take it off. So what you'll need is a buffer one, which opens up. Yeah, that's your, that's your, that's your last wheel that you buff with. And you will need a stitched wheel, and that's what it's called. It's called a stitched wheel. You'll need that stitched wheel and you'll need a buff wheel. £6 each, and you will need that attachment for your home drill. Okay, if you're going to use a home drill like me, give it. Make sure you do not use this continuously. If you use this continuously, if you turn it upside down, put it in a vice, and just turn it on, if you use it like that for long periods of time, you are going to burn your drill out, and there is the risk of fire or electrocution. So, if you use one of these for it, use it intermittently. So. Rub it down, leave it 10-15 minutes, go back, rub down your next one. And that's all you need to do, okay? These are the wheels and that is the attachment you need. With this, 
you are going to use something simple. You can use tea cut. I find it very runny though. Please I don't use tea cut. I tried it and it goes everywhere. Use something like Halfords. This is a Halfords rubbing compound. It's like um, toothpaste. It's probably the easiest way to do it. And all I do is I apply it on a cloth and I just rub it around until it's there. So I know when I touch the wheel to the tank, I'm not going to let fly a whole stream of toothpaste behind me. It just keeps it. So I just rub it into the tank and then just buff it straight off. Do small sections of the tank at a time. Do not cover the entire tank in this because what you'll find happens is this dries and it doesn't have the same. It doesn't have the same effect on the tank. It doesn't get rid of once it's dry. It does not get rid of the scratches. It kind of congeals. It just comes off in lumps. So you need to put a small amount on on a small section. Buff it. Repeat as required. Okay. So that's what you need. That's all you need. That is all you need. Um, I would say if you would need anything else, save your fingers, go out and buy yourself a, 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 rubbing, uh, a rubbing block, a rub block, a sanding block if you will. This one cost me, came as part of that, it was a kneel pad, it cost me a pound and I just cut a chunk off of it and that's what I use. It's just about the right thickness, it's got a nice solid feel to it but it will kind of bend round corners when required. So that's what I use, nice and cheap. So, that's it. Now what I'm going to show you is, um, I'm going to give you the tank, I'm going to show you the tank. Basically the tank was, it's an old tank off of an old motorbike, an unidentified motorbike, I'm not quite sure what it's off of, but it is an old bike. Um, basically the bike was scrapped and I bought the tank. So the tank was covered in crap paint which I've removed and I've taken it down to the bare metal. And the bare metal being a dull aluminium grey. So I'm going to take it from the grey. I'm going to polish it up to chrome like. I'm stopping at 1200, remember, so it looks shiny at the end of it. It is shiny, but it's not mirror like finish like chrome, and that's because I've deliberately stopped there. If you want mirror like, you will continue with the 1500, you will continue with 2000, you probably can continue with the 2500.